Hello everyone, welcome back to Zeros TV. Today we have a special announcement where we'll be welcoming the newest member to the short selling community. Our guest today is Roddy Boyd of the Foundation for Financial Journalism. Roddy, thanks for joining me today. Mike, thanks so much for having me. Good honor. So let's just get started by giving our audience a sense of what you're currently up to today. Mike, uh, I do long form financial fraud centric investigative journalism. I guess in uh, uh, on a good day, I call it accountability reporting, but uh, it, it, frankly, it's just old timey classic reporting on uh, using documents, using interviews to uncover the ways that uh, corporations and large publicly traded companies uh, often mislead and lie to investors and other stakeholders. Okay. And just to give everyone a sense for your background. I know we were talking before before we recorded here that um, you know you have an extensive background. You've been doing this for a very long time. So can you just give us an idea of what you've been doing in your past, how long you've been doing this, and sort of the people that you've interacted with along the way? <laughs> I've been, been at this for a while. Uh, been doing journalism for 23, 24 years now. Started out on Wall Street, uh, worked my way up from a research program onto a, a trading desk. And uh, in the late 90s, I left that to enter journalism. Journalism had always been my first love, but uh, uh, life's twisty turns and valleys take you different places and, and you do different things along the way. And, and certainly working on Wall Street taught me a great deal about what might be politely called how the sausage is made. And then also, uh, you know, I met people, I made connections. I, I, uh, I also learned uh, a great deal about how to analyze companies, uh, uh, how capital's raised, so forth. But, uh, you know, started out uh, at Institutional Investor News. Uh, I don't believe it's around anymore. Uh, you know, it's a publication of Institutional Investor Magazine, which is broadly around still. Uh, worked my way up from there to the New York Sun, a uh, a now deceased broadsheet, but I uh, was on the business desk there. Went to the New York Post business desk. Then from there, I went to Fortune. You know, along the way, I did, you know, some freelance articles here and there. Wrote a book called Fatal Risk about the collapse of AIG. Uh, it's an honest book. It's a hard-hitting book. As I like to say, it's uh, the book few people have read, tragically, uh, for my bank account. But uh, that is the way of, of publishing publishing books. For the last, geez, it's pushing 12 years now, I've done this kind of work, long-form accountability reporting, document-driven reporting on uh, on corporations, publicly traded companies at the Foundation for Financial Journalism. Uh, it's a nonprofit. Ironically, had set that up just as a sort of a boom emerged from uh, uh, the kind of the 2008 collapse where a lot of you know, more media companies had, in addition to the, the financial community, there was a, a, another big step down in media level employment. And I, I figured, do this kind of reporting. It's lengthy. There's a narrow audience that likes or wants it. Uh, it's almost always the first thing to go. <laughs> In fact, it's not almost always. It is invariably the first thing to go when uh, when the call comes down from the publisher to the editor in chief. Uh, Headcount's got to be reduced and production's got to go up. Mainstream media at that point ended for me, and I set out on this path. There weren't hardly any nonprofit newsrooms at the time. There was about twenty. Uh, ProPublica and the Center for Public Integrity uh, were the biggest, as well as the Center for Investigative Reporting. I think they were the first out in Berkeley. And I've been doing this for 12 years. We've had some really good days. We've done some very meaningful things uh, along the way. So I'm very proud of that work. I would respectfully submit that uh, it stands on its own and I need not defend or you know market or amplify it beyond the fact that it stands there as incredibly clean, tightly edited, highly accurate reporting on bad people doing bad things. Well, that's a, that's a great summary of kind of where you came from, what you've been doing, and and really the, the quality behind your work. 
Uh, but really, that brings us to today. You know, the big announcement that we're making here on Zeros is that you are making the switch over into short selling. Presumably, you'll be using the work that you do on an ongoing basis. Um, but my question is, what prompted this switch and why now? Well, those are great questions. Uh, so I'll take the next seven hours and explain them to you. Uh, the thousand and one you know, uh, dark nights of the soul that led me to uh, make this decision. Two things. One, I'm coming hard on 55 and I am very sick of fundraising. Uh, I have to say that right out front. You know, it, it would be great if I was at ProPublica or another organization where other people you never see or never meet uh, uh, do all that for you. Uh, that was not my fate. That was not my lot. Uh, this is a very narrow, very specific kind of reporting. And there's lots and lots of conflicts of interest that emerge. So I got very tired of that. I took some time off to think about what I want for my future. And I simply came around to the fact that the easiest way to continue to do this important work and do this important work without interruptions, demands for to, to raise money, to uh, cut budgets, that sort of thing, was simply to find a balance sheet partner uh, for certain situations that I write about uh, where it's clear the company I'm writing about will probably uh, lose value, I decided that it's the easiest, fastest way for me to continue doing this work. Uh, I, as we said before, was talking to you and, and your colleagues, uh, quite frankly, uh, my work will be very different than some of the other notable short activists. I don't want to criticize any of these men and women. They do fantastic work. Uh, I simply want to observe that my reporting is not designed to uh, call everything the next Enron. Uh, um, there will be slight concessions made to uh, uh, readability and flow. But in the main, this is going to be long articles, long form reporting, document driven. I, uh, For one example of how I will frankly be different from the the leaders of this field, the the Hindenburgs and the, and the Muddy Waters and uh, Wolfpack Research in them, I approach the company. I seek comment. They <laughs> are never happy. And one of the things that I use a lot of capital for is uh, legal costs. But it's worth it. Uh, I believe in being fair. I believe in being accurate and and as transparent and accountable as I possibly can be. Boy, it's this is a turnaround. This is going. This is uncharted territory. I, I don't. It's not a natural evolution, to be candid. Uh, it's certainly one I'd thought about over the years and always discarded. In fact, I uh, I guess I now need to publicly apologize to Chris Carey, as a friend and supporter at Share Sleuth. I I had criticized that model uh, probably I don't know eight ten years back, and now well here I am doing it. Chris was right. I was wrong. Again, I just think this is the easiest way for me to continue to do the work that I do, which is identify companies that aren't really being talked about and drill down into how they're failing either their investors, their stakeholders, which is their shareholders, the people around them, the community, their customers, and, and oftentimes, in, in certain cases in my career, Insys Therapeutics, Valiant Pharmaceuticals International, half dozen others, they're just, they're just moral monstrosities wrapped around a, an incorporation shell. I want to continue going after them for many years. Yeah, well, as you alluded to off camera, I mean, it's definitely one of those fields where there are a lot of costs associated with, with doing business. You know, so certainly just maintaining the business model is certainly a very valid reason. But, you know, I, I think what you said there in terms of just trying to continue the great work you've done throughout your career and pointing out the corporate malfeasance um, to not only hold them accountable, as you said at the beginning, but also just to help protect investors is really a great venture. You know, I, I don't think there's any question that you have a tremendous background and you'll you'll bring a lot of great value. So, um, you know, I think you're coming Please on. meet God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Roddy, it's been great catching up with you. Um, I'm thrilled to welcome you to the new uh, short selling community. And for the viewers out there, please be sure to tune in because Roddy will be bringing us a brand new chopping block tomorrow, Tuesday. So Roddy, I thank you again for your time and look forward to doing this again soon. Hey, Mike, thanks so much. Be safe.